Hi, welcome to Right to the Top, I'm Adam. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the IELTS academic test, the writing section. We're going to look at the task one table. I've done a bunch of videos about the other types of uh, task one, pie charts, line graphs, etc. You can follow the link at the top here to see those. Today we're going to look at the table. Now, for me personally, the table is the most boring of the task one style tasks. Why? Because basically all you're looking at are a bunch of numbers and maybe a few words here and there. There's no visual aids. Like with the bar graphs, with the pie charts, at least you can quickly see some sort of uh, movement. You can discern some relative information about the, inf about the things, the items that are presented for you. With the table, all you have is numbers. Now, the approach is exactly the same. And I know that a lot of people have a problem with a table, so I'm going to walk you through one. So here is the task we're going to look at today. You can press pause on your video player. You can look at it, read the task, look at the table, and then we'll come back and we'll go through it uh, together. So let's start with the actual task. The table below gives information about the percentage of adults who paid for admission to various entertainment events in five nations. Very straightforward. All you're going to do is you're going to paraphrase this task and put it into your introduction. All you need to add is the unit of measure. What, what do the numbers actually mean? What do they represent? And you'll get that from the table itself, on top of the table. Now, very important, and this is where a lot of people make a mistake. Remember, all you're doing is summarizing and reporting. You are not analyzing. Don't draw a conclusion. Don't say why something is the way it is. Don't guess as to reasons, etc. If you can't see it in the table, don't put it into your report. Just take the, inf the key information and again, main features and comparisons. That's all you're looking for. And how are you going to do that? Again, same as the bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, etc. You're going to look for highs, lows, uh, something that's very common, something that's very out of the common, out of the ordinary, and that's what you're going to focus on. Another thing you want to always make sure, especially with a table, what is, what is on one side and what is on the top? What are the items you're looking at in terms of uh, making comparisons, etc.? And there at the top, that's your unit of measure, percentage of adult population attending paid events. So we're looking at the demographic, we're looking at adults, and how many adults go to these four uh, different entertainment forms. How much, how many adults pay for these things, pay for admission, pay for tickets? Now, the first thing that I would notice if I were doing this task is that the countries are split in a such a way. I have two North American countries and I have three European countries. That is probably the easiest way to split up your paragraphs. And remember, that is very much what the graders are looking for. How did you arrange your information? How did you paragraph the details so that and remember there's more than one way to do this so one way split it by country another way is to do it by highs and lows and differences so what's the first thing when i look at the numbers what's the first thing i notice well i notice that for all five countries cinema attendance is the highest in all five countries so i'm definitely going to focus on that now because i have the highest obviously i'm going to go looking for the lowest in the North American countries, it's museum and gallery attendance. In the European countries, it's the sports attendance. So those are my lowest. And then if you look at performing arts, they're very similar numbers and sports are very similar numbers. Sorry about that. Whereas in museums and galleries, there are big differences between the Europeans and the North Americans. And in the cinema, there's a big difference between the North Americans and the Europeans. That's what I'm gonna focus on. So again, I wrote actually two versions of this task. You can see both of them in my website. There's a link below in the description box in YouTube. But I'm going to show you the one where I split it by similarity and difference, similarity and difference. Body paragraph one, similarity and difference. Body paragraph two, similarity and difference. So let's get into it. First, my introduction. Again, you're just paraphrasing. The table presents data on the entertainment purchases of adults in Canada, the USA, France, Germany and the UK in 2012. 
The information is presented in terms of average adult attendance as a percentage of the population. 37 words. I can probably make it shorter, but because I listed each country, then it's making it longer. I could also list it by the entertainment forms, but that's just too many words. You don't want to do that. The graders will think you're just trying to fill up the word count. Okay, so try to avoid stuff like that. Next, have your overview statement. Some teachers will tell you you need a conclusion. Again, you're not concluding anything. You're not adding anything. You're not analyzing anything. So what you want is an overview. Start with overall. This is your overview statement. Another thing that a lot of people do, they connect the overview statement to the introduction. But the introduction is telling you, what am I looking at? And the overview is telling you, what can I generally see? So these are two separate ideas, have two separate paragraphs. Even if your overview statement is one sentence, separated into its own paragraph. So I want to show you two versions here. I want to show you one, this one, let's start with this one. Overall, it is clear that the most popular form of entertainment in all five countries was movies. The least favorite was museums and galleries in the North American market and sporting events in Europe. The reason I want to show you this is as something to try not to do. Try to avoid this structure. It is adjective. Even worse, it can be seen. It plus a passive verb. First of all, you're using more words than you need. And second of all, it is a bit of a weak structure and everybody uses this structure. It's not wrong, but if you can avoid it, avoid it. Secondly, if you do use this structure in the overview, it is clear, it can be seen in the graph, in the table, etc. Make sure that you don't use it again in your body. I've seen people use this structure in every paragraph of their report. Use it once, don't use it again. Ideally, don't use it at all. Okay, so now I want to show you another way to write this overview statement. I'm going to use one sentence. This one has two sentences. I'm going to show you one sentence without that it is clear structure. Overall, movies were the most popular form of entertainment among adults in all five countries. Be very straightforward with the overview statement. With museums, galleries, slash galleries. Now, in the table, they wrote museums slash gallery. You can as well. And sporting events being the least popular in North America and Europe, respectively. Sorry. And museums and galleries and sporting events being the least popular in North America and Europe, respectively. And here, I know that a lot of you love to use this word. I'm showing you a way to put it in there. Try not to use it again unless it comes up. Four fewer words, one sentence, much more direct. Okay? Now, so what, how did I mention I was going to do this? I'm going with a similarity and then a big difference. And in my next paragraph, similarity and big difference. Make sure you have some sort of consistency. While the performing arts do not show a great discrepancy, change or difference, I should say, in adult attendance, ranging from 31.9 in Canada to 41.9 in France, which means I'm including all five countries, it is different from museum and gallery visits. So I'm going to show you now. I'm shifting to the difference. France nearly doubles the USA in this regard, museum and gallery visits. Uh, in this regard, 39.1 to 20.6, while all three European countries whose rates are relatively similar to each other more than double Canada's rate of 15.6. Difference, uh, sorry, similarity, difference. Let's look at the next one. In terms of sports, I'm shifting focus. I'm starting a new paragraph with a transition, new focus. There is a similarly small variance, variance, discrepancy, or synonyms among the five countries with the UK boasting the most tickets sold to adults at 31.1% of the population, and France the lowest at 22.7. Cinemas, meanwhile, meanwhile, there's my transition again, I'm gonna go to the difference now, attract over half their adult populations of, sorry, attract over half the, sorry, there's a little mistake there, the adult populations of Canada and the USA, while in Europe the high is just 46.4 in the UK. My total word count is 190. Try not to go over 200. If you can put all the relevant information in 160 words, that's fine too. I generally say aim for about 175 in all task ones. Sometimes you won't have enough to say, but remember, 150 is your minimum. So that's one way to do it. Now, as I mentioned, another way and maybe an easier way is to split the information, the two body paragraphs, by the countries. 
This is what's happening in North America. This is what's happening in Europe. The two inf all the information, etc. Also notice, I didn't try to include every detail. I barely mentioned Germany. I didn't mention all the different numbers. I mentioned the general and the main features, the things that I think are the most important. And the graders don't care what you think is the most important. There's no such thing as a right or wrong answer. There's only a well-expressed or a poorly expressed answer. If you try to do everything, you're definitely not going to be able to do it well. Pick what you think are the main features and report those in a nice, tight summary. Okay? And that's it. If you have any questions about the table or any task one question, uh, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. If you like the video, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and come back for more IELTS, TOEFL, grammar, vocab, writing tips, etc. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.